ディズニーダンボールディズニーダンボール It was morning at the circus. Hopeful mothers looked up as stalks flew overhead. Each stalk carried a tiny bundle which held a baby animal. When the stalks dropped, the bundles, parachutes opened, and the baby animals floated down to the ground. Mrs. Jumbo sighed as she watched the happy mothers cuddling their babies. Oh dear, I did so hope there would be a bundle for me, she said. Mrs. Jumbo suddenly joined the other animals waiting to be loaded onto the circus train. That day, The circus was moving on to another town. As the train chaffed along, a voice called, Mrs. Jumbo. It was a stork struggling to carry a very, very heavy bundle. Mrs. Jumbo shared a carriage with four other elephants. They waved their trunks and called, You who, Mrs. Trunk, stork? Over here, the stork flew into the carriage and dropped the large bundle beside Mrs. Jumbo. She opened it eagerly. Inside was a baby elephant. Jumbo Jr., look at him, cried the other elephants excitedly. Isn't he adorable? Just then, Mrs. Jumbo's baby sneezed out, laughed two enormous ears. The other elephants gasped. Then they began to giggle. They thought baby Jumbo looked so funny that he ought to be called Dumbo. Mrs. Jumbo didn't care what the other elephants thought. She loved her baby no matter what he looked like. She lifted him up in her trunk and gently rocked him to sleep. That night, the circus train stopped and all the animals climbed out. The circus man put up a huge tent. Next morning, the circus parade made its way through the town. People clapped and cheered. The band played and Clowns and animals marched down the street. Crowds hurried to the circus tent that night. They were eager to see all the animals. A group of noisy boys gathered round the elephants. Look at his ears, cried one, pointing at Dumbo. Aren't they the funniest things you ever saw? The boys laughed and teased the Dumbo. Then one of them pulled the little elephant's ears. Mrs. Jumbo trumpeted with anger. She grabbed the naughty boy and smacked him with her trunk. Everyone thought Mrs. Jumbo had gone mad. They screamed and tried to get away. The ringmaster came rushing over to help. Down, down, he cried, cracking his whip. But Mrs. Jumbo just became more and more angry. Soon, Dumbo's mother was tied up and taken away. She was locked in a small cage far away from Dumbo and the other animals. Back in the tent, the other elephants gossiped about Dumbo's mother. Such disgraceful behavior, they said. It's all his fault, you know. And they turned and glared at Dumbo. Nearby, a mouse called Timothy was watching. He felt sorry for the little elephant. I'll be your friend, Timothy told Dumbo. In fact, I'll bet we can make you famous. 
All we need is a good plan. Just then, they heard the ringmaster talking in his tent. I've got an idea, he would say. We will make an enormous pyramid of elephants. All it needs is a big finish. So, as soon as the ringmaster was asleep, Timothy crept into his tent. He scampered up to the ringmaster's ear and said, you are big finish, see the little elephant with the big ears. Dumbo, Dumbo, murmured the ringmaster. Dumbo. Next morning, the ringmaster tried out his new idea. In the center of the circus ring, the elephants balanced carefully on top of one another. They waited for Dumbo to jump to the very top of the pyramid of elephants. But as Dumbo ran, he tripped over his ears and bumped into the pyramid. The elephants crashed to the ground and the whole tent fell down around them. Now the elephants were angrier than ever with Dumbo, but the ringmaster had another idea Dumbo could become a clown. So Dumbo was dressed like a baby and put at the very top of a burning building. The other clowns pretended to be firefighters. They sprayed Dumbo with water and held a hoop for him to jump into. Poor Dumbo was terrified as he jumped. Down and down, he dropped until he fell through the hoop into a tub of sticky gunge. The audience cheered and roared with laughter. The clowns were pleased with the success of their act. After the show, they drank champagne to celebrate. But poor Dumbo was it invited to the celebrations. He sat outside the clown's tent, crying softly. Timothy gently washed the ganji from the little elephant's head. Then Timothy thought of a way to cheer up his friend. We'll go and see your mother, he said. Dumbo and his mother were overjoyed to see each other again. Mrs. Jambu put her trunk through the bars of her cage and cuddled her son. She sang, holding him tenderly, tenderly, tenderly. But all too soon it was time for Dumbo to go. He didn't want to leave his mother. After they had said goodbye, he cried so hard that he got hiccups. Here, have a drink, said Timothy leading Dumbo to a water bucket in the clown's tent. As Dumbo and Timothy drank, they began to feel strange. They didn't realize that a bottle of champagne had emptied into the bucket. Before long, Dumbo and Timothy felt very strange indeed, and they began seeing strange things too a whole parade of pink elephants seemed to march past them. The next thing Dumbo and Timothy knew, it was morning. When they opened their eyes, they saw a gang of crows looking at them. Dumbo and Timothy were high up on the branch of a tree. The little elephant was so surprised that he lost his balance. He tried to grab hold of the branch with his trunk, but it snapped. Dumbo and Timothy tumbled through the air until they landed in a pond far below. I wonder how we got in that tree, said Timothy, shaking himself dry. Maybe you flew, joked one of the crows. Yes, 
That's it, cried Timothy. Dumbo, you flew up he up there. The little elephant looked surprised. He couldn't really fly, could he? Timothy and the crows guessed that Dumbo could fly. The little elephant just had to believe it himself. One crow gave Timothy an ordinary feather and whispered, This is a magic feather. It will help Dumbo fly. Holding the feather in his trunk, Dumbo stood at the edge of a cliff. Before he could change his mind, the crows pushed him. All at once, Dumbo was flapping through the air. That night at the circus, Dumbo stood at the top of the burning building. He didn't feel frightened. Now that he had the magic feather, he knew he could fly down safely. Timothy was tucked inside Dumbo's head. Okay, he said, take off. Just as the little elephant leapt into the air, he dropped the feather. As Dumbo began to fall, Timothy cried, Flap your ears, you can fly, you can. Dumbo took a deep breath and began to flap his ears as fast as he could. Suddenly, Dumbo was flying. The ringmaster was amazed. He watched Dumbo swoop over the top of Ganji and soar past the cheering crowds. Dumbo was a star. Before long, Dumbo was famous all around the world. Crowds flocked to the circus to see Dumbo, the amazing flying elephant. The ringmaster was so pleased that he ordered the release of Dumbo's mother. In fact, he gave Mrs. Jumbo a special railway carriage of her own. Timothy's promise had come true. Dumbo the little flying elephant had become famous, but best of all, everybody loved him.